right, welcome back everyone. This week's picture of the week is being brought to you by Flowers. I'm not even gonna say Garden Center. I just did, but sorry. Deer processing, because they're gearing up for the upcoming deer season. Hey, we're only about 37, 38 days away, but who's counting? Hey, first picture here. This is from my good friend, Rip Beasley. He said, Hugh, I gotta show you my brother, Randy Beasley, doing some catfish noodling. Guess who his partner is? Bobby Wilson. Oh, that's cheap. T.W.R. That's cheap. He's cheap. Yeah. He knows where all the fish are. <laughs> all right, here's the one. This is Jeremy Holland. Uh, no, no, that's just some pictures of some noodling going on right there. That's all that is. That's some good pictures there of some noodling going on. And our, here is Jeremy Holland. Jeremy Holland with a nice rock fish right there. That came from uh, Old Hickory Lake, I do believe. Awesome, awesome fish. Our next one here, this is a good friend of mine, Steve McKenzie with McKenzie Mechanical Air Conditioning. Steve with a nice eight foot bull shark. He's got on the end of that line right there. You can bet he had his hands full. Fought it for a little over four hours. This is little Miss Emma Nunley with her very first fish. Look at that smile on that little girl's face. Emma, what a nice, nice. Now, Emma's got something to live for because that is her dad. That is Stacy Nunley, or, or her uncle, I'm sorry, Stacy Nunley. And Stacy had one, that one weighed a little over 10 pounds out of Nickajack Lake. I've been telling y'all, Nickajack's a sleeper. And the last picture here, look at that fine t-shirt that young man's wearing. That is Jim Flowers. He is in Alaska. And that is a Southern Woods of Waters t-shirt, but he is holding some silver salmon that he caught out there on the river there in Alaska. And by the way, he is sending us a bunch more pictures. This week's pictures, if you want to keep them on here, they're on Southern Woods of Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219, or simply email them to me at Hugh at southernwoodsofwaters.com. We'll get them on here really, really fast for you. We appreciate all those. And like I said, Jim Flowers is sending us some more care of Alaska fishing. Alaska is just it's that's oh unbelievable. That's paradise yeah. up there. It really is. It really is. Now, David Sims, TWRA, he is your uh, aquatic habitat protection biologist. Uh, he is going to, along with some other folks from TWRA, they are going to show us right now. They're going to take us to the Tennessee River and the Duck River. Let's go with him. Now, what are we seeing right here, Dave? This is what it looks like on the bottom of the Tennessee River down around Shiloh, around Savannah. Oh, that, we just left there. Yep, that's where we were at this week diving. And uh, this is probably about 18 foot of water. And you can see, you, you can't put your hand down without touching a mussel down there. I'm You're, telling you, look at, now, now are we looking at several different kinds of yeah, mussels? Yeah, there's several different species. Uh, I, let's see, here's a, that's called a butterfly. A butterfly. They got, the common names is what I go with. I can't keep track of all the scientific names. That's all right. There's a little, that's a like a two or three year old monkey face. It looks just like a rock. Yeah. And then he'll, I think he shows another one here. Now this would be like an adult that's probably 14 or 15 years old. Now that's a monkey face too. Yep. That's okay. the big one and that's the little one. And uh, you just find them everywhere down there. And that's an ebony shell. That's a commercial species. And if you look at them on these, you can sort of see rings around them, yeah. like you can trees. Yeah. And that's how we age that's them. That's how you age, age them. Age them the same way as you okay. do trees. You, you get within one or two years on it. If you want to get exact, it's yeah, just you can see them on that one. where you put your hand. There was a, there was a muscle. Yeah. Yeah. And the, there's very few areas in the state where you can do this. Man. It's not. This is what it used to be everywhere. The Cumberland River used to be like that. The Elk River used to be like that. Uh, the Upper Tennessee, the Holston used to be like that, and it's it's changed in uh, the last 70 years because of the dams that were built. Yeah. And this is Richard Kirk, one of our biologists uh, uh, back in the day. Now he's, uh, I think he's chief in, in Region 2 over wildlife. And right here you can see the one siphoning right in the center of the picture. He's going yeah, to point it. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. That's it. Siphons and he closes it up. He's opening he his it. mouth and closing it. Yeah. There's two siphons. One sucks the water in. The other one spits it out. And that's going back in. That's its foot. That's how they move. Okay. Now here's one that is displaying trying to attract fish. 
with that little wavy action. You can actually see where one took yeah, a little bite the out of it. Yeah, little wavy action there. And mm -hmm. when it when they bite that, you see it looks like little pearls right in the center. Well, yes. those are packets of the juveniles of the of the larval muscle. And when the fish bites that, it'll puncture them little balls, and that's when the larvae will get on the fish. Because every freshwater mussel has to have a fish host that it attaches to. And it'll stay on it anywhere from three weeks to three months, depending on what time of year it is. And so these animals come up with all these unique ways. Look this one that. here, what does that look like? It looks like a, a little fish. Yeah, like a little fish it's is right its there. It's got eye spots, it's got yeah. its gills, it's got fins, and it's actually moving it. That, that's a freshwater mussel doing that. And when the big fish comes and bites that, right in between those two pieces of skin are the larvae. And when it bursts that pack, the larvae get on the fishes. Uh, usually, they attach to the gills. Now he's and just th that one's just sitting there like it's yep, rotating little, on the inside. Yep, just like a little amoeba. Yeah. That, and that one's in about 38 foot of water, still down on the Tennessee River. And uh, it's they're just amazing. Now here's some of the equipment that we use. We use full face mask and stuff. We use surface air supplied now, so we don't use the tanks. And one of the things we got to watch for on the Tennessee River or any river. Are these little things right here that come by, and you don't want to get oh my too close to those. Not too close to the barges. Because <laughs> they shake you pretty good when you're underwater. That one there will shake you. Now, now you you normally go in there, dive her down, flags and yeah, all that. Yeah, we have to do all that, you just like everybody else. Okay. Now, what's this one doing? Now, this one, this is just showing as they're out feeding. This is what they do. He's getting ready to go take a big jump. There it was. That's how they move around. they just like little inchworms. They always okay. close up. You'll see them when they're getting ready to move. All of them pretty much will close up everything, and then they'll just do that little inchworm thing. And you can see how small. It's not a big one. It's four or five inch shell. But what's funny is you see him try to pick this thing up. He can't get it out. <laughs> it's He's that got one, that foot. It's got a large foot. You'll see him pull oh it in. Oh, my goodness. That is a big foot. Now, on that one, notice the, the, the rings on it. Yes. See, there's you just count like two, two-and-a-half-year-old, three-year-old right. muscle right. for that one there that's four four inches long. Um, that looks like the duck. Uh, that one's actually, I think that's the, uh, it's either the barren or the green in Kentucky. Okay. Now this one's actually from down uh, in Richland Creek that goes into the elk. Yeah. Is where this is. And this one you can actually see the siphon is the one on the, the left of the little fringy stuff on right. it. Right. And then you can actually see the waste coming out. All that is is just bound up sediment and stuff. And it just squirts it out. It's nothing poisonous or anything. It's just right. sediment and algae and stuff that it can't eat. And it squirts it out and it just falls to the bottom. That's the stuff. It, the, the, there you move. Yep. And what they do, they filter the, the stuff that makes the water colored. That's what they filter out. The suspended solids and stuff. And so if they weren't out there and we were cleaning, we'd have to pay a lot now more to get that out. That's, that's another one this plan. That's pretty good current flowing right there, yeah. too. Yeah, this, one, like, this one's not very deep. It might be three foot deep at the most where, where these animals were, but there was just a lot of, a lot of diversity in this in Richland Creek, just about a mile upstream from the Elk River. That is amazing. Yeah, you, you never can tell where you can find these animals. You might find them in a creek that you can step across. Yeah. And you, uh, I always tell people just to get out and look for them. It don't matter where you're out. Um, you you know just take down, take your time and look for little mussel shells and stuff. Now, can people actually? I mean, does it hurt them if we pick them up and look at them? As long as you put them right back down, is yeah. I always recommend if you don't know what you're doing, doing to just lay it back down. Okay. Or the best thing is just look for the the relic shells, the dead animal. It's just the shell. It's yeah, what's the, left just on. the shell itself. Yeah, you can't hurt that. Picking them up and looking. Uh, you know, as a kid, we used to just walk up and down the river banks and, and we'd pick up shells and carry them home because of the different color, yep. uh, you know, the pinks and the purples and the pearl colors, and it was just neat to carry them home yep. and, and do that. But inside their shell is very, very clean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very, very clean, clean and slick. Um, I'll let you show some of these off here. Yeah, let me have a cup. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Courtney, can we see this right here? Look how iridescent that got a little is. purple that, there that, that little purple that one's called an elephant ear if you turn it around and look at it you can sort of see it sure is how it it's looks like, like an elephant ear, ear. and got, this is an elephant ear muscle freshwater muscle freshwater that's the common muscle. name that's right. the common name what an amazing that is gorgeous now and that is pretty there's an odd shaped one that one's called a black sand shell just because it's on the outside of it, it's pretty look black. look how pearly white. Pearly white and got a little purple right in the center. It sure there. does. It's a little, little two-tone. little two-tone right here. It's got a little purple right in here. 
This one now. Can you help me here, David? What What are you calling the rings now? Okay. Is this like a ring yeah. here? Yep. And a ring here? Yep. And then one looks like it's about halfway or three quarters of the way forming right there. Yep. And so roughly about a three-year-old muscle? I would say four and a half to five. You, the first okay. one you're not going to count because they usually wear off. Okay, okay. So about four and a half to five-year-old For that one. Freshwater yep. muscle. And this one's called a what now? A black sand shell. A black sand shell. Boy, it is gorgeous how high gloss it is. I mean, it's gorgeous. Here's a neat one here. You'll find this one around on, on Old Hickory Lake. That species is called a three horn. You can sort of see where it, it has, gets its name. Yeah, it's got, <laughs> it's, got, it's got one, two, three horns here. Uh, yeah, it's got three horns to it. It's got one, two, three. And it does look like a horn on there. Yeah. It does. Now, this one's common in Old Hickory? I've seen them on, on Old Hickory up around the Gallatin steam plant up around the bank, you'll see where muskrats eat them and yeah. they'll, they'll be laying out. That's how I find it. Most of the shells that I've got, uh, well, just about every one of them I've found in shell mittens, they were already dead. I don't take any of the live don't ones. Don't take the live ones, no. no don't, don't take the live ones. All right, that is a beautiful one there. And then that, that was just a, a neat one that's called a uh, pistol grip. It does you look like a pistol you, grip. I mean, it does. It does look like, like the a checkering yep. on, on, a, on a pistol grip. So. Pretty neat, and look at the inside of this one. Oh, it is just pearly white too. I mean, it is it is gorgeous. Now, this being this this bone like back here in the back, that's the actual hinge part. That's the yeah, that's called their teeth. Teeth. They got uh, oh shoot, pseudo cardinal teeth and lateral teeth. Oh, okay. And the way you can tell the difference oh, between oh, I feel that. The way you can tell the difference between freshwater mussels and Asian clams or clams, which everybody you, you can find these. Just about yeah, everywhere. Yeah, we'll show the, the oh, whoops, I just dropped it. There you go. All right. This is a clam, and this is a mussel. And the way you tell the difference is, on the inside, the clam mm -hmm. will have two long teeth, one on each side and a little short stubby teeth in the center, whereas on all freshwater mussels, you only have one long tooth. You won't have it on the other side of the, sh awesome. of the short stubby ones. Awesome. So, so a clam has two long teeth. Right. And a freshwater fresh muscle. muscle only has one. one. Correct. Great, great news. I tell you what, this, I'm learning. That's good. I need to learn this. <laughs> now, do you have a one that the monkey face? Oh yeah. Here's we got to show this monkey there face. There you go. There, there. That's a pretty shell. This is a gorgeous shell. I don't know if you can. Let's see if we can see that. I've got it sideways, but now look at this way. And they call this a monkey, monkey face. face. Uh, and now, where is this one primarily found? Big rivers. Big rivers. Yeah, like Tennessee. Uh, there's some in the Cumberland still. All right. Um, anything buffalo, duck? Buffalo, the duck would, uh, the lower duck might have them. Okay. Uh, the Duck River is sort of a medium sized river to small. Okay. So you'll find. Buff uh, buffalo River, maybe? There's not a lot in the buffalo. Is there not many muscle in the buffalo? Right. Yeah, there's just not. And everybody, nobody really knows. It, it's sort of, it, it, it seems to be real shifty with the gravel, the flow. Right. The, if you've ever been down there, you hardly ever see gravel bars that aren't always moving. And if you got that much substrate that's moving, it'll just wear these shells apart. It just kills okay. them out. Okay. All right. Now, what's this next one here? This one here is one. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones there. That one's called a rabbit's foot. It does look, look like, like right the old keychain. The old keychains. That's yep. right. This is pretty awesome, y'all. This is pretty nice. Now he's. Is this a full grown? That one there. Uh, Maybe I'd say a mid, little bit bigger. Yeah, it's about half grown. About half grown. Yeah, because these animals, they start. All of them start from the size of a pin point, the needle point, not the head, but needle point, and then they grow up to these animals. Now you talked about that in the in the piece. Now. Uh, they've got these little wavy things that are trying to attract the fish, and you said they can't survive without a host fish. Yeah. Is there a certain kind of fish, or is it just all fish that they can do it to? That's the neat part about these animals. They Certain mussels have to have certain groups of fish. It, it's not just any fish. None of them can just use every fish. Okay. So they have to be able to attract this certain fish. Is it... So do they place themselves where these fish are prominent, or how, I mean, I don't understand how they can tell the difference. Well, they they can't, uh, but they do. You, the lures that you saw, the one yes. that looked like a minnow, okay, yeah. that one's probably going to attract a predator, like a largemouth bass right. or something like that. So, uh, depending on the lure, 
that's that's one way that they do that. Um, there's there's uh, these animals do several different ways. Some of them, as you're swimming or when we're diving, you'll just see a little puff of of the larvae come out. They just right. squirt them out as as the fish swim by. And uh, those larvae just a attached if, to whatever swimming if, by if the fish yeah if it's downstream of it and swims through it uh there's others that um, uh actually um, will uh, there's a small shell on the duck river and the clinch river that's just about this big that's as big as it gets but but the female she'll open all the way up and have a little worm right in the very center now i've seen those yep it's I've called an oyster them. shell an oyster shell and what what she'll do is is the the host fish for it is a darter some of the darter species right and when they see that little white worm they'll come and, and just stick their head right in there and when when they do she actually grabs a hold of them like the old movies you see on tv yeah but it's just this big and it'll grab a hold of it and squirt them in its mouth and then open up and let it go and the neat thing about that if the wrong like if a shiner does it and comes up and bites that worm the the darters have really bony tough heads shiners are pretty delicate fish yes. and she can actually crush their head and then she'll let them go she won't squirt the larvae in its mouth so she can sort of she knows the difference they sort of select that's one way they can tell a little bit i wouldn't say they can really tell but that's just one way they select i am so amazed that they can they can tell the difference or they can do this way uh, that be I'm a, I'm blown away by it because oh. how do they know the difference between a darter and a chub minna or you know a shad for uh, that matter? You oh, know? it's it's the the more amazing thing is they these animals do all this they they imitate other animals like the minnas and mm -hmm. and uh, they can feel if you touch them of course if you wave your hand over them they can tell light they'll shut up they don't have any eyes but they can detect light. And of course, uh, and then they, they do what they do, eat and feed and do all their other stuff. And they do that with only 15 nerve endings in their whole body. 15? 15. 15. You, you know, a human's got 200 on the end of yeah. each hair and we got billions in our brain. Oh yeah. And they do it 15. with just 15. That's and a neat animal. I wanna, I wanna leave this segment though, showing the washboard. Can yep. you hand me that one? And yes, sir. Courtney, I wanna show this one. This is huge, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now this is not the biggest as oh, they, they get. get twice that big they get twice as yeah. big but this is called a washboard muscle and it gets its name from all the ridges on here Correct. just like you were washing your clothes yep. on, on, on this but oh my goodness and then look how big on the inside and that is one long tooth right there yep. now yep. that is a big long tooth and it's pretty thick that shells almost it's probably a, an inch thick it in is the, in the thickest it is part. that thickest part's probably an inch thick that is going to be awesome hey we got to take a break when we come back we're going to open up our phone lines here at 615-737-7767 We'll try to answer any question you might have about the freshwater mussel. Heard back to more. So was waters. 